I think that first step of like just starting to get rid of your stuff is a huge way to propel yourself into a smaller lifestyle, whatever it is. Um, I love planning. I love, like if I'm gonna plan a vacation, I buy guidebooks and I read blogs and I, I'll read the guidebook cover to cover and highlight, um, but then I stop. I don't, outside of booking hotels, like I don't plan activities, I don't go on tours. I like to arm myself with research and then go with the flow, van life especially. I did a ton of research, I really armed myself with as much knowledge as I possibly could have and then I just went for it and you kind of just figure it out as you go with whatever that little bit of background knowledge is. Hi, my name is Loren. This is Penny and this is our home, the Penny Bago. So I'd been living in DC for about seven years and really wanted to be a homeowner. So I was looking into what it would cost to buy a home in DC proper um, and a bad house in a bad neighborhood starts at about half a million dollars. So I said, okay, you know, I'm just gonna work for a long time and keep throwing money at rent, you know, literally throwing money out the window. Um, and I discovered then, you know, it was new to me all of a sudden that people lived in vans and that you didn't just have to have a sedentary tiny house or a sedentary house. And as soon as I figured that out, I knew I needed to live in a van and it was done. So I bought my first home. So um, I did end up going with a professional builder and I just really lucked out and there was an article um, from Curbed on a builder on the East Coast called Off Grid Adventure Vans, OGA Vans, and their whole thing is to build um, affordable vans that are eco-friendly, um, and they're a licensed upfitter with the Dodge dealership, so you can actually have the build and a new van um, in the same car payment, so that really completely changed what I was able to put in here. I would never have had this would not be my van if I had to pay for it out of pocket. Um, so I traded my rent payment for a short car payment and it's, it is still less than half of what I was paying for rent in DC. This design is, is pretty custom. Um, I figured it out with um, Aaron, who's the owner of the company. So what they do, this, the Murphy bed is their design. And I really loved that when I went to meet with him, we sat and had a conversation in one of their vans. And I was like, oh, this is great because it's sort of the best of both worlds of having this seating area, but you don't have to store this giant pack of bedding and make your bed every day. So I loved that. So the majority of my clothing are in these two uppers um, and I am hyper organized. I am totally OCD and I've been traveling internationally for a long time so I love these packing cubes. So um, I have everything color coded and labeled up here and in these packing cubes. Um, and I really think like, minimal wardrobe is pretty easy. I mean, I have, I have this dress in the van. I have a lot of like sort of impractical things that I liked. I'm like, you know what, this is going in here. It works so much better. Like these jeans are so like hyper organized in here in their tiny little, I have like six pairs of jeans in this one cube. Then this one is, it kind of does double duty. So ha this half of it is my bathroom. And then this side is, this is all Tupperware and then oil down here. Um, I did bring a curling iron in the van, but I've not, the one time I used it was when I was staying in a hotel with my mom, so it's just there, but I can use it if I want. The last one here, this is all of my food storage. Um, it's a little hard to open. We've got two really, really strong sets of magnets. Um, so this here is my bathroom, and this is the biggest piece of a custom design work in here. Um, I, there's a couple of vans that have a semi-similar thing, and I really wanted one for this to double as extra countertop space. So I don't, I don't cut on the surface, but it is butcher block, and it's generally where I prep, so I'm, I can pivot here in sort of my galley kitchen. Um, but what this is, is this actually clips up here on the wall, and then it opens and I have uh, a nature's head composting toilet and a lot of bathroom storage, like my laundry soap is in here. Um, this little plastic tower with all of um, my toiletries. And it's great to have this extra, this extra space and to have a bathroom in the van. I was pretty, pretty adamant about not needing to find a toilet um, multiple times a day. I'm very well hydrated, so it's, it's really great to have your own. And the nature's head is definitely the way to go there. They're expensive for a reason. It's because they're a really, really good product. Um, I shower mostly at Planet Fitness. I think that's where most of us um, get our showers. I also treat myself um, to a state park campground about once a month and try to do all of the things. Um, use the shower, refill my water. Um, if they have uh, electricity, I'll plug into shore power and charge everything and you know, like just leave the lights on and pretend like it's just a, an infinite resource. Um, but 
outdoor shower is really nice to have. I actually love it the most for the dog. Um, if you have like muddy feet from a trail, if she's really gross, like you can hose off gear. It ends up being like an external hose more than it is a shower for me to use. So this is my kitchen. Um, I love cooking. I cook a lot. And um, most of this design is from the builders. I did change um, the sink and the stove. They do the Dometic um, smaller all-in-one. So this Suburban um, cooktop, I hadn't put a ton of thought into the cooktop. I knew I wanted um, two burners and I wanted there to be some space so you could have like a cast iron skillet on here and then something else. Um, this is a pretty standard choice in vans. People either, I think, kind of go with this or the Dometic. I did go back and forth about having it um, this direction or turning it the other way. And I'm not quite sure why, why I chose this direction, but it, it works fine. It seems natural to me. I have a really beautiful you know, sight line. Everything is here. And then I do have extra cutting space. So I end up cooking like this mostly. This is the piece I use to cut on. Um, and I keep the rest of the butcher block. And I really wanted to have a deep sink. So this is made by Ruvati, um, and they're just from, you can order it on Amazon. Stainless steel, comes with a little cutting board and this um, strainer basket, which is nice. And then the sink is really deep. I can actually put something in here and do dishes. Um, I hate dishes. I hated them in a house. I still hate them in a van. And I wanted to try to make it a slightly more pleasant experience. So having the, the space to actually like put a pot in there uh, is pretty life-changing. Um, I also wanted to have sort of a pretty faucet. I got lucky. I was visiting my parents while they were remodeling their bathroom, and I went with them to the, the bathroom fixture store and happened to find this one on sale. So um, it's really great. It, it pulls out, which is nice. Um, I could theoretically, I think, wash my hair in here. I haven't tried, but I, I'm pretty sure I could get my head in there and use this as a, as a shower spigot. I have a five gallon gray water tank under the sink, and that's actually just a jug. Um, just one of these guys. And I try to empty this pretty frequently um, before it gets full because you do have to pull it out at an angle since the, the hose is coming down from the sink. And if it's really full, it's a little bit of a precarious situation. Um, for those of you who know what gray water smells like, you don't want it on the floor. Uh, Dishwater is gross. Even if you don't have any food particles in it, it's really, I think, the worst smelling thing in the van. So emptying that all the time is a big, is a big um, way to go. So I have a, a Dometic fridge freezer combo. Um, it is a little messy right now, but you can fit a lot of things in here. Um, I think my biggest con with this is that since the freezer, um, it, the freezer basically stays cold from running the whole back panel cold. So if you shove something in the fridge part back against the, the back wall, that will freeze. So basically the whole back of it runs really, really cold. So this is a drawer, um, this is also in a soft close, and this is where I keep extra dish towels and all my utensils, um, wine opener, very important. So I do have, this is an extra set of switches, and like I said before, there's extra wire, so these would be switches for um, other things. I have a Victron Energy Bluetooth readout here, so this is great, I can access um, all of my systems here, but I also can, it's synced to my phone, so I can check to see what my batteries level are, um, battery levels are, and how much energy I'm drawing at any time on my phone, which is really, really nice. Uh, moving on to that, I have two different sets of switches. Um, they're both on dimmers. So this one does this light bar under here, which is really nice. And then this back set of LED lights. And then the front one does the front set. And again, the dimmers are so nice, especially at night. Um, I don't really close my curtains all that often, so having this all the way dimmed down makes it less bright in here. So this piece is one of the things that the builder um, does standard. And at first I was unsure if I wanted this wall here, but I actually love it. I have all of, I have a lot of things against this wall. I tuck the outdoor rug, I have jackets on here, the remote for this fan. Um, and you really don't need the sight line. That's not how you drive a van. You don't look behind your shoulder. Um, but in here, this is all of my dishes um, in between these two. So this is like pots and pans, um, the Omnia Sweden stovetop oven, which is great. Highly recommend those if you live tiny. Um, and then all the dishes up here, fire extinguisher for safety. The middle section, normally um, this is a microwave from the builder. I have no need for a microwave. I didn't really use a microwave that much. Anyways, the food that goes in the microwave is garbage, so you shouldn't eat it. I do have a mini um, little toaster oven, which 
uh, has a big surge when you turn it on, so it trips the breaker, so I just use it when I'm plugged in. So that's really nice to do like some meal prep when I uh, stay at a campground. I'll make little egg cups or things that um, I can freeze later. And then the last part here, this side storage is um, where the table tucks in. So the table goes into the middle and the legs are in there in the table. Um, I also shove a bunch of other things in here. So coffee grinder, napkins, that kind of stuff. Okay. I have a 27 gallon freshwater tank that is over here. So this just comes out um, and that is filled on the other, from, from the outside of the van with a, a hose. Um, I absolutely love these bench seats. Um, they're very comfortable. You can sit, seat a lot of people. This piece here also, you can drop down by itself. So you can make an extra bench in the back if you wanna have a lot of people sitting here. And then these bench seats, I thought the bench, um, the bench storage, I thought that it was gonna be really hard to get things in here. And it's just, you can put an obscene amount of stuff inside of them. So I pull these off. Um, these are put on with really heavy duty Velcro. Um, and there's just all sorts of stuff in here. Yeah, so this for me, um, I have a lot of games. I have tons of cookbooks. Um, I do a lot of embroidery, so there's embroidery stuff in here. Pretty much everything in these is like fun activity things, camp chairs, that sort of stuff. And then the other side, this back one is actually a pull-out drawer, which is really nice. So this pulls out fully and then you can also access it from the top and it has a soft close on it. It is actually mostly dog things. So this is dog food, extra pair of boots for when it's cold, dog food in the boots. Um, and it is also my liquor cabinet. So tiny, tiny, tiny things, tiny bottles, um, but mostly the dog things. I have a fan in here. Um, I spent a lot of time in Florida. Uh, I moved to Florida when I was six, so definitely a Floridian. So the fan when I'm in Florida and it's 80 degrees, um, you know, it's a metal box at the end of the day, regardless of how well insulated it is. So if it's 90 outside, you know, extra fan is nice to sleep. So in this one, um, I have some other clothing that isn't up in my uppers. Um, hiking backpacks in here. I have um, an air compressor, toe straps, the tire jacks, so all the car things. This is a backpacking tent. Um, just really, you can get so much stuff. My, my dog's onesie, because you have to have a onesie for your dog. Um, REI camp table. So lots and lots of goodies in there as well. This side um, is actually, there's a little bit of storage and then it's where my batteries are. So, so there's this tray in here, which is really nice. This is where most of my shoes are, um, some incense. And then this tray actually lifts up and the batteries are underneath it. And then this is access to a lot of my electrical. Um, the nice thing about having a builder on it, so I have all these extra wires that I can um, add stuff onto later. So all the wiring is run through and there's more wires in the wall than I actually have things attached to. I have 400 amp hours of lithium ion batteries from Battleborn. Um, I really wanted a pretty robust system. I work full time, so I need to have uh, the ability to charge all my things. Um, and I just didn't want to be in a scenario where I needed to go to a campsite and find um, a way to have shore power or to move around more than I needed to. So I have 300 watts of solar and then 400 amp hours in the battery bank. And I can honestly, I can be off grid for a really, really, really long time. Um, usually around 9 a.m. I'm at 100% charge. So I have two Max Air fans, one in the front and one in the back. And then there are windows diagonally on each side. So when you have those pulling up and the windows open, it sucks all the air up and around and really keeps it pretty, co pretty cold. So I absolutely love the Murphy bed. Um, this bed is fully made. There are uh, sheets, quilts, two blankets, two pillows, and a dog bed in here currently. So this is when you, now you are actually holding the weight of the bed. Um, so you do have to take a second, but pretty easy. It just all comes down one piece, shove the mattress over and then straighten the pillows back out. Yeah. And the bed is fully made and ready to sleep. Um, this is a six inch memory foam, really, really comfortable. Um, I had a really nice mattress at home, but I still think this is, this is up there. It's not quite as good, but it's really nice. So because I work, I try to put it up every day. Um, I do end up working. I usually have this back here 
and a pillow here and that's my my work nook I lean up against there and put my coffee here um, but I really try to put on real clothing and make the bed I think that that's just really important to stay in that like productive headspace um, I have what I call bed days like if the weather is really rainy the bed stays down all day and everything is on the bed and you know that's when you're like streaming a lot of Netflix or doing non-productive things but I don't do them very often, especially when it's nice outside. I have two separate part-time remote positions. Um, so one, my family publishes um, tourism magazines in South Florida called Must Do Visitor Guides. So it's a magazine in Sarasota, Naples, and Fort Myers. So I've been the assistant editor of their company for 11 years, and I also run their social media, and I run an exchange program for the State Department. So I'm actually, when I leave here, will be driving out to Minnesota to leave the van and uh, my dog Penny to fly, and then I'm flying out to uh, Ethiopia for three and a half weeks to run the exchange program that I manage. So I love this awning. Um, this is the Fiamma, I think it's 3,500 or 350, something like that. Um, and it's a manual uh, hand crank, so I can show you it's actually attached right now. So this piece clips in across the two bench sheets inside, but it's just a little, a little hook. So you hook the end and you turn this to turn into a handle and then you just crank it either way. Um, so really, really easy. It is a little bit of work with one person. The legs store up in the top part. So basically what you do is you pull it out halfway and then you pop a leg out and put it on the ground and adjust it and then you have to move it. So if you had a second person, you can move it together. Um, it takes like five extra seconds to have to do it. But this awning is amazing. Um, you can leave it up in, in light rain. Obviously you wanna let it dry out before you roll it back up. It provides so much shade. Um, it's obviously great for gatherings. I have this whole activity space um, with another van right now. So we were able to pull this out. This isn't even all the way out. It goes out a little bit longer. These things are huge and they're really tall. Obviously right now this is up above um, another van's sliding door, um, but you can also angle it down to be shorter. It's very adjustable. The shower, um, it's nice. This actually can sit up here, right here. So you can stand here and shower um, with hot and cold water. And then you can also pull this off. Um, you adjust the how much water is coming out here. It's not the fanciest of shower heads, but it absolutely, it absolutely works pretty well. And the hose is, is pretty long, so it's easy to do the dog. Being really realistic with yourself about wants and needs and um, what those lines are. And if, they're, if you are a person who needs to shower every day, just because a lot of van lifers and tiny houses don't have showers in them, does it, like you should put a shower in your van. That's one of those things that's gonna keep you on the road because you're gonna be comfortable. It's, it's the things that break people are always these little things that they, they misjudge, you know, they thought, oh, I can kind of, I can do this like dirt bag lifestyle thing. I don't care about having a toilet. And then they realize, you know, in the middle of the night when it's freezing and it's pitch black and you can hear coyotes that they don't want to go outside and pee in the wilderness. Like you have to be realistic with yourself. Figuring that out, it makes it easier to take that leap. Thank you so much for watching. You can follow um, our journey and our travels at on Instagram at flit, float, fly away. And we also have a blog. I shouldn't say we, she does not blog, but she's heavily featured in all of, all of my online things. Um, but the website is flitfloatflyaway.com. Thank you.